Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything we find interesting, and sometimes, just occasionally, soup. But probably <laughs> not this week, because it's a bit warm. It's the middle of the summer, depending on where you're yeah. at. This side of the world, things are still wicked hot, but we're crawling in, crawling into fall, into not spring, which is my favorite time of the year. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, Jill, you're particularly excited because you have a bicycle. You've had that bicycle for a long time, right? Yeah, I have. So, you know, my, my Steve husband actually fixed, I have a stationary exercise bike, but I, I haven't been able to ride it because it was, well, it's made for your average size person and taller, who's much taller than me and my feet couldn't reach the pedals. So on Sunday, he, he actually drilled a new ho hole in the stem of the seat so I could, so we could lower it. And now I can, my feet reach the pedals and I can actually use it. <laughs> so I was excited about that. <laughs> oh man, hours and hours. Now you can join the um, group of people like, I have an exercise bike, this is awesome. And like a day later, you're like, let's turn this into a clothes hanger. Oh, no. I actually have been using it. As a closer? <laughs> um, no, no, no. <laughs> to exercise on. And it's nice. I got one that's only about 40 pounds and it folds too. So I can I can move it easily around the house. Oh, those are smart to get because like when when you're angry at it and you don't want to look at it anymore, you can just hide it and be like, what? <laughs> you just hide it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have to look at it. I mean, it's not sitting there in the corner. Like, why aren't you using me, Jill? You can just hide yeah. it. You're like, it's out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> Well, it was funny because earlier in our uh, uh, pre-show, Ben was uh, saying, well, you got to only use it when you're watching YouTube videos. And and that's when I've used it, watching YouTube videos. It's Not perfect. Not what I said, miss. <laughs> I said you need to wire it up so you can only watch YouTube. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. And, I, and, I in order for TCPIP communication to function in your house, <laughs> those wheels have to be spinning. Oh, that would be cool, actually. <laughs> Hey, instead of solar, why don't we have <laughs> have an exercise bike power the, the router? <laughs> Something <laughs> tells me you'll get your answer about 25 minutes into that. Yeah. You're like, man. <laughs> oh, that's what you need to do. You need to set it up to where we, we'll put a, yeah, we'll, we'll put a governor on it. So your download speed can be determined by how fast you're pedaling. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh yes, and thank you, Steve Husband, for doing that for me. We, I've needed to have it done for a while. I've had the bike for a long time, and he finally had some time off work and and spent a day on Sunday doing stuff just for me that I needed. <laughs> so that was what a sweet husband I have. Good on you, Steve. Good <laughs> on you. I know Jordan has a one of those ex crazy expensive like fan bikes. It's like, man, I gotta use it. Oh. That. Yeah, like, but he's like, I paid so much money for that. I got to use it. And I'm like, yeah, it's one of those type deals, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm glad everybody, <laughs> you know, go touch grass, people get outside, do a little bit of exercise and we'll kill you. Mm -hmm. I was talking about in the pre-show about like a script I got to finish reading. I've already written the script. I already got the video. If you follow me on Mastodon, if you're in our Discord, you know, I'm working on, well, I haven't like drawn it out, but you should be able to suss it out. Um, how you can test round trip latency your audio interface at home easily without spending any extra money mm, nice and most importantly i'll show you how to benchmark it because man we love benchmarks yeah everybody loves a good <laughs> benchmark it doesn't matter what it is nerds gonna look for a benchmark you got this like it's a washing machine you're like yeah yeah where's the benchmark <laughs> yes. how do you even benchmark a word don't care just put this give me some numbers on a graph put some bars yeah. on it that's all i need to see and like i need to see where this sits on the benchmark and that's something that you can do with audio interface, because the most, for me, the most important thing is low latency. And most people have no idea. They think they understand what the latency of the audio interface is. Not a clue. None. Mm -hmm. They think it's block size. I'm like, that's not how you do it. But I'm going to fix that. I'm going to show a way you can test it. I'm going to show you. You can come over to the Linux Gamecast, look at pre-existing benchmarks, see where you stack up. And I'm, I'm even going to go, here's really what I should name the video. This one hack, latency hack, can save mm -hmm. you like three milliseconds of latency. 
but I'm not going to name the video on that. I'm going to show you something that's very important people overlook all the time. And it's going to be fun. I'm probably going to have that out. Today is Wednesday. I might have that out Friday or Monday for patrons. So keep your eye nice, out. Then. Let me know what you think about that. Also, got all the parts in. Everything's in here right now. I got the $28 test bench from Amazon. So we're going to see how hopefully not horrible that is or laughably bad. Either way, it's going to be good content. And uh, if you watched Linux Teamcast Weekly on Saturday, you know I have two Apple remotes now because I found my other Apple remote after I ordered one. Yes. We're good on that. <laughs> I got all the adapter parts and I got the drives in, so that's good. Yay! And uh, we just got to find time because I want to live stream both of those if time allows. And if I do a live stream, I like to do it around this time anyway, so everybody can watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we've been watching, like, like, oh, look, it's two o'clock in the morning. Great time. I'm like, I'd love to do a stream. No one's going to be around. Stay tuned for all that. Oh, right. Something we talked about on Saturday. A couple of people here play games. You've played, a, you've played a video game before, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. On a daily basis, you, yes. <laughs> you've heard of these video games. <laughs> and um, it was kind of interesting news. We've been doing. Um, a show called Linux Aimcast for over a decade, longer than Steam has been on Linux. We've been yes. around for a minute. <laughs> Last week, according to the Steam survey, was the first time a little bit of like a weird nerd history moment. Linux usage surpassed Mac. Yeah, on that Steam. was so cool. <laughs> I mean, a little bit, but it happened. Yes. Thank you, Steam Deck. Thank you, Valve. That's a very yeah. strange thing to even, you know, pre-Proton to even consider. You know, Mac always had that 2%. Linux is almost at 2% right now, according to the Steam survey. Yeah, but strange. we know that's actually higher in reality. <laughs> uh, we don't even, we have no idea. I will bring this up each and every time we talked about it on Saturday. Steam survey numbers are self-reported. Yeah. So they're useless. That's what I said last week. I, I said, we always point out these numbers mean nothing, but they're in our favor this week. Therefore, yeah, so they're we got to be happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, RIP Apple. But it's not really a surprise when you think about it, because Apple has moved from x86 to ARM. And while Apple has made this transition, a lot of game developers have decided not to. Yeah, hmm. absolutely. Yeah. But that's not going to stop us from running Linux on our Macs. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of uh, Linux on your Macs, a more polished Linux experience on Apple Silicon M processors is getting closer to fruition. The talented developers from the Asahi Linux project made a major, major announcement. The new Asahi Linux flagship distribution will be the Fedora Asahi remix this is really really huge news they are still actually working out the bugs and kinks but they aim to officially release the fedora asahi remix by the end of august 2023 and lots of new features and machine support is in the future what's interesting about this also is that the fedora asahi project started in late 2021 and work began in 2022 alongside the arch arm release but they had been talking about working towards integrating their work into fedora and in fact asahi linux states our goal is for all distros to eventually integrate all this work so that users can use their choice of distro and be confident that it will work well on their machine but in order to kick off the process, we had to prototype what this integration looks like, which meant we had to create our own distro. Makes sense. So adventurous users, you can try out the beta of Fedora Asahi Remix today, but keep in mind it is a beta and expect rough spots that could break. But I was really excited to hear about this news because I've known a little bit about this because I know one of the lead developers, Neil Gompa, at uh, Fedora, and he also works at Red Hat. And he had been telling me a little bit about, about uh, this going on over the last few years. 
So this has been cool news. <laughs> One of the things they make a point to bring out is uh, there's some extra stuff that's going to be added. It's not in the repo. They haven't even really got it implemented just yet. And it's just like question mark. Mm -hmm. What's that going to be? Nobody <laughs> knows. You're not yeah. even going to get a sneak peek, even if you install it early. So yeah. if, um, if you're that fraction of a fraction of a fraction, you know, the type of person that has went out and bought an ARM-based Mac, you're also the type of person who buys an ARM-based Mac and installs Linux on their ARM Mac. This, this is going to be in your future. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. The Arch-based <laughs> stuff's still going to be around. But this is going to really help expand things out. Yeah, absolutely. A lot, absolutely. lot more eyes on it. And, you know, I, I look forward to this 10 years from now. Because that's probably when I'll pick mm -hmm. up a M1 to play around with. <laughs> And and we gotta gotta make Steam compatible really soon. <laughs> Probably never gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna be a while before all the apps will be you know be able to use on them. Well, it's something you want to pick up and play with. I, I don't think anybody yeah. has the illusion, and I want to make sure that you don't that mm -hmm. you don't pick this up like, hey, I'm building a Linux box for productivity and everything else, and everything's gonna work out of the box. This is not the case right now. Yeah. Th this is this is Tinker Toy Extreme. Good old days. Something to play <laughs> around with. Just because we got a Fedora badge, it's still under heavy development. So keep yeah. that in mind because I don't want any emails like, well, then you were, and Jill, you were talking about, and I went out <laughs> last night and bought a Mac and I can't do everything. It's like, why can't I have a least Steam? I'm like, never said you could. But I assumed, <laughs> yeah. and you're a fool. <laughs> yes. You know, these people exist on the internet, unfortunately. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> so. Who's heard of Pipe Wire? Ooh, Pipe Wire is yes. a thing. It's been around for a minute. Mm -hmm. Really has been around for quite some time. But yeah, I wouldn't say definitely in the last two, maybe three years, like development pace has just been kind of crazy. And you know, it makes sense because Wayland's kind of picked up. Everybody's getting on that ball. It's happening. And it's fair to say for audio and video management under Wayland and even X to some extent, Pipe Wire is absolute the new hotness, and it really lets you do. All of the cool stuff that we've been doing with uh, Jack for the last 16 years. But you don't have to like mess around with a bunch of stuff. And it's getting there. Yes. I, I am talking about the audio stuff. The video stuff, I'm wholly unfamiliar with Pipewire. And I'm sure Tim's like, no one ever talks about the video. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I just know about the audio stuff because people's like, how do I do this? I'm like, are you using Pipewire? And they go, yes. And I go, have fun. Um, <laughs> nothing against pipe wires. I don't have any boxes, development boxes set up. And one of the big reasons I haven't is because everything in the studio, there's three PCs under this arm. There's a big chonky streaming box under this part of my hand and over here. Mm. There's another PC dedicated for routing all the audio for this thing back here, which is an eight port fiber switch. Now, by their powers combined and a little bit of grayskull, that's our audio over IP <laughs> system for the studio, which operates with a sub six millisecond latency. It is completely lossless and 32 bit floating point. So there's no conversion going on. And that ties the DAW to the streaming box to Jill's PC, and it's all done in real time. And I've said multiple times, I'm like, I'm, I'll start paying attention to Pipewire when we get support for NetJack. And Pipewire has been really good with working with jack support. You know, that, that's been a focus and things are getting fixed with, uh, and if you don't have Pipewire, you can just, they have dropped it. It's a drop-in replacement. You know, you need to use jack, Pipewire can handle it. You need Pulse Audio, Pipewire can handle it also. It's got you, fam. So now, I, this was, uh, this page was updated, I think like six days ago. The past couple of months, we now have module NetJack 2 manager mm -hmm. and a module NetJack 2 driver. And Go check out our show notes if you want to see everything. Everything's going to be linked, so don't worry about like trying to Google it and look it down. But I really like this chart. And if you've been curious about what you can do with networked audio and pipe wire, this is handy to look at because it's going to give you the description. It's going to tell you the protocol. And like, yes, it's audio. Does it do MIDI? Because that's another thing you can do with NetJack and a lot of other um, protocols for your network. Does it do video? Again, you can do video with pipe wire. So we can get some interesting stuff maybe down the road. And most importantly, you see 
nut jack, latency, low, low. And anything other than that, we start getting into low, medium. We have V bends. I want to play around mm -hmm. with this stuff. I'm going to be looking into this and, you know, other tools that can interface with a Zeta Enbridge uh, Jack Trip Jamulus. Pretty cool. Happy to see it. Then I look up like the, the starting commands and oh boy. <laughs> uh, the, the, We're going to see. We're going to see. Because um, I'm not going to say that, you know, NetJack out of the box is human readable. But to me, it is because I've been working with it so long. So this is going to be a lot of different stuff to look at, play with. Kind of excited about it. If you saw me last night, yeah. I wasn't using Pipewire. I was playing around with a uh, streaming AES 67 over yes. the network uh, last night on Twitter. I know Jill saw it because mm -hmm. Jill was like, click. Yeah. I saw it. <laughs> Exciting times. Um, Pipewire will be the future. To answer another question I get on Twitter when I posted this, I'm like, hey, this is a really good guy. And you're like, so you're switching to a Pipewire tomorrow, right? <laughs> Not yet. No. <laughs> No, um, you know, uh, this even has opens Opus support built into the uh, NetJack, yeah, which is a good feature. That's cool. Um, Opus is a really good codec. That's what we use for our Jitsi. You know, you're listening to Jill. You're listening to the podcast, mm -hmm. which you might not know. Jill is on the other side of the country. Yeah, I'm on the West Coast here in Los Angeles. We're not sitting around in a room together doing this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we pull that off and we don't do local recording. When you think about local recording, that's where everybody on a show records their audio by themselves. Yeah. And then some poor, poor soul has the job of aligning that in post and getting everybody set up. What we have is uh, I've set the Jetsy server to deliver an Opus stream mono at 512K, mm -hmm. which is, is it lossless? No. But is it close enough to where it makes no difference? You tell me. You get ears. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Go check this page out. It's it's something to get excited about because I'm definitely at the point now where I'm sitting around. It is the constant tinkerer in me where, mm -hmm. you know, I have so much in this studio that is not broke, don't fix, and that drives me insane. As it would rightfully drive anybody insane who likes to tinker with things because you walk yeah. into like a, a cool toy room with a bunch of really cool equipment in it and you're like i can't play with any of this nope can't can't just use it in that room but this uh th this is uh it's got that excitement i'm like oh new things to learn maybe there are improvements to be made one of these days i'm gonna get uh whim tamens aka tim Wayman's, yeah. and sit and talk with him and ask him all the questions that nobody else knows to ask him which i'm sure that's why he would if he's you know, artfully avoid me and be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be washing my hair tonight. Can't make it. And I'm like, understand. Oh, <laughs> well, he, he's like our hero in Linux. I mean, he, he'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the low latency real time audio support honestly is what Ven needs to switch to Pipewire on Linux for his, his studio and to do these podcasts and streams. And and that, that, that's been a problem with Pipewire because there's always been kind of the middleman where, where Pipewire, Pipewire it was on top of the ALSA stack and thus creates more latency. Well, everything's using the ALSA stack. Yeah. The ALSA is your... But it was... <laughs> this is something I need to make to help people understand. There's a lot of confusion with it. And it's understandable. The ALSA is... You have ALSA, then you have ALSA. You have ALSA low level, which is your drivers in your kernel. That's ALSA. Mm -hmm. that's where your sound card drivers live inside your kernel is that part of the also stack but everything runs through also there's no getting around also why because also is your drivers yeah yeah now pipewire in its current form so if i was uh to implement that jack 2 with pipewire right now that would be just saying what it would be if i implemented pipewire in the studio it would be netjack with a bunch of extra steps thrown in mm-hmm as about like, well, I'm just use NetJack. But what I want to see is like improvements to NetJack. I have a wish list of things because I got issues with ring buffers and expanding um, latency due to just increased size with network. It, and I found these issues, but they were from like six or seven years ago and no progress. 
One of the good things about track is it's incredibly stable. It's incredibly mature. One of the bad things about track is trying to get anything done with it. Uh, the maintainer's like, I don't want to mess with this. Everything works right now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I get However, that. over in Pipewire, like, let's light it on fire. Let's go. Let's go. And I like that development hmm, cadence. It's really good to see. I'm really happy to see it. I really support it. Wouldn't use it in production. <laughs> I'll be over here on the sidelines cheering on. Yeah. <laughs> so we got some uh, bad news, though. Yeah, we do. I, I was really sad about this, but we have to talk about it on the show. So uh, we just lost one of the greats in open source software. Bram Moulinier, the creator of Vim, passed away on August 3rd, 2023. And he leaves behind one of the most iconic text editors in the programming world, the text editor and IDE called Vim, or Vi Improved. And from this article, it states, in the 90s, when several Vim clones emerged, Vim remained distinct and popular due to Bram's tireless efforts to, to enhance and maintain it. And despite the rise of modern integrated development environments and tools like VS Code, Bram's work ensured that Vim remained a stable choice for developers who valued its speed, simplicity, and extensibility. And, you know, at the time of its first release in November of 1991, the name Vim was an acronym for Vi Imitation. <laughs> but this changed to Vi Improved late in 1993, and that's a, a bit of history I hadn't heard about, so I wanted to tell everyone about that and vi i knew it stands for visual interface and that and that makes sense but no one says visual interface they always say vi <laughs> so th this was just really uh, sad news he died very young uh he's only like like 10 years older than me and i was just I, we were all shocked by this actually because he was young and you know what one of my favorite improvements um over Vi and Vim is that it is extensible and has the awesome ability to install plugins. Like one of my favorites is NerdTree, which is a great file manager for Vim. I've been using that for years on every Vim install. And I just, I, this was so unexpected and we're also so in shock from it. It, it, it. it took me aback a bit. I was like, oh, I've been following his work for so many years and I've seen him talk. So this is just really sad news. So rest in peace, Bram. And I typed colon Q bang when using Vim yesterday in remembrance of him. And for those that don't know, colon Q bang is the command to execute when you want to exit Vim quickly without saving changes. So, I mean, there, yeah. there's also kill all. Yeah, <laughs> there is that. <laughs> <laughs> control C. <laughs> well, I want to go down. What when I think about uh, Vim, I immediately go back to editing video in Vim, mm -hmm. which is uh, <laughs> possible. The first time it people is. saw that, and I'm like, wait, what? You could do something like that? It, yes. Vim's got a bunch of plugins and extensions, and it's got a long, long history and a great community around it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's always surprising, and especially when we're getting to our age that we're right now, we're like, Oh boy, you know, mm. like even ten years older than like that was like just surprising. Like wow, yeah. And you never know, so make the most of the time you got, people. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Now, at the beginning of the live stream, I promised everybody that I was going to tell them how to get a free Raspberry Pi four. Yes, you did. <laughs> I did, just to keep them around because I no, I'm seriously about to tell you how you. Can get a free Raspberry Pi 4. No joke. <laughs> not, just here. How do you think you would without, without thieving? What, 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 what one do you think? Uh, maybe you want a contest? You want a contest a, or a raffle? Maybe or, Amazon sends you the wrong thing. Yeah, and that happens sometimes. You get the wrong part from Amazon. <laughs> Man, if Amazon accidentally, I, you see the all the time, um, they'll post on Reddit like, oh no, Amazon accidentally sent me. You know, 50, you know, eight terabyte NVMEs. Oh, 
Yeah. If Amazon sent me 58 terabyte NVMs, like they sent me 50 Raspberry Pi 4s, I would never know. Yeah. <laughs> I would tell no one. And no, Amazon, that package never showed up at my house. What are you talking about? Well, you know, Ven Amazon is actually really good about that. I've gotten some mistaken items before, and some of them were cool and some of them weren't, but they just let you keep them because it was their mistake. So they. I, I like yeah. how Jill's publicly I mean, was like, yeah, I saw they weren't addressed <laughs> to me and they weren't mine, but I opened them up anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. They actually sent the wrong item in, instead of the one I ordered. That's happened a few times. <laughs> they, um,. Yeah, Amazon's never had a problem. That's one of the reasons I was talking about that uh, track mania last night is I still will order stuff through Amazon, especially if it's kind of expensive or pricey, and I'm a little bit worried about it because if anything happens to it, like, mm -hmm. I have no love for Amazon whatsoever. But I've had this. I've dealt with Amazon returns. I'm like, yo, things broke. They're like, yeah, You're so all right. Easy. Uh, yeah. We'll send somebody to your house tomorrow to pick it up. Done. That's the competition we need. We need somebody to compete with that. I'm not even yeah, worried about I prices know, at I this know. point. It's that return policy. <laughs> but I'm talking about Raspberry Pi 4 because Look they've been found in abandoned spin scooters in Seattle. Yeah, they do show up in the strangest places. This is the latest and quite an unlikely source when you think about it because we all see these scooters around in any metropolitan area, small towns. You name it, typically like Lime scooters are, I think, omnipresent in most states in the Americas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. You never think about that, but this is from Spin, and this is in Seattle. This was a rental company, and they just kind of noped out of the city. They did. You know, like, uh, okay, we've had enough. Like, I don't know if they had financial issues or anything to that effect, but they left behind a lot of their scooters. Mm -hmm. And they've just been sitting around, you know, not doing anything. They didn't have service. Nobody was coming to charge them because the company just kind of left. I'm like, okay, well, somebody <laughs> decided, you know what, let, let's see what, what do we do? What do hackers, what do nerds do? Like, let's see what the, makes these things tick. So they popped open the cover, they cracked it open, and they have Raspberry Pi 4 Bs just in them. Oh. Yeah. If you are in the area, I don't know if it's too late now. I mean, it is Seattle. Crack one of these suckers up on like a digital lobster like it is and get your prize. Yeah. And uh, my first thought when I saw this was like, of course you were having financial problems <laughs> if you were buying Raspberry Pi 4Bs for your scooters. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, they probably bought them, you know, when they first came out when they were cheaper <laughs> retail. <laughs> even at $75? Yeah. <laughs> Like, that should be an embedded part that's like two bucks. Yeah, I know. It is It is kind of strange that they use the, the full Raspberry Pi 4. But I'm sure it was partly used for the software to integrate with the mobile app to rent the scooter and keep track of distance. I'm sure it's 100% one but, of the reasons that company went out of business because they yeah, were making dumb decisions. They could have used like the Raspberry, Raspberry Pi, Pi Pico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know, this is all to our benefit. Like, yes, uh, crack that, crack what you, you see that orange scooter. If you're in the Seattle area now, I do want to say this, though. Like, don't, don't get on a plane. I kind of want to get on a plane and go get one, just to have a video of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but if you're in that area, yeah, go grab one. Uh, I want to say that this is a niche enough thing, because we're all immediately thinking, if this was in your neighborhood, right? Let's say it was like in, you know, your neighborhood in L.A. If I, somebody said, oh, yeah, the Athens scooters have Raspberry Pi 4s. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing about 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> However, I fully expect maybe like seven or eight other people are going to be like, yeah, let's go to go. So you might be able to find one if you're in uh, the Seattle area and you see yeah. some spin scooters. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying there's some real surprise <laughs> to be had. And don't be greedy, though. Yeah. <laughs> don't be greedy. Don't, don't, don't try to yoink them all. Yeah. Here in L.A., we have tons of different scooter manufacturers for rentals. In fact, we're one of the first cities to, to have those years ago. And uh, Spin is one of them. I've seen them before. <laughs> so if if that company pulls out of L.A., hmm, maybe maybe I could have Strider go and look for a Spin <laughs> scooter in his neck of the woods. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> it's silly. It's silly where you see, like, um, and the, this is one <laughs> of the reasons it's kind of shocking because you wouldn't expect a $75 yeah, SBC yeah. to be sitting in a scooter because, like, that that's insane. 
to have that you know, a quad core. I uh, mean, are they doing like video capture? Or no, they're not. You know? they, they were misappropriating investor money. Uh, a moron made this decision. Oh boy! Oh boy. <laughs> like there is like this like that is the equivalent of like yeah you know what let's just put a gold coin in this thing why I don't know we get yeah. uh, that is so overpowered for anything that that scooter would do and if you think I'm being facetious just look at any other scooters internals compared to yeah the, so that would be interesting uh, what is in the lime ones do you know it's lime not a Raspberry Pi four yeah it's an embedded you know something it's some. Uh, SOC that they've gotten printed out, or you know, I seriously doubt any of this stuff's cost them at this size, but it's not yeah. a seventy-five dollar single board computer. Yeah, I know <laughs> that that'll be a difference in an SOC, not a single board computer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, if you're outside of Seattle, I strongly advise not cracking open a spin because then yeah. somebody's going to be cracking you open at some point if they uh -huh. catch you doing that. Police will come. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no vandal but yeah if they left these things uh in the city as digital e-waste yeah yeah go for it go for it i don't have any problems with that and uh yeah i see our theory to chat's like that's where the pies yeah dumb projects yeah it went the, during the shortage yes. during the shortage you know the raspberry pi foundation <laughs> had to make sure uh, businesses got them because they needed to put them in scooters brilliant <laughs> all right everybody we had fun running yes. just about on time this week. So let's oh, go ahead and jump out of here. How about some, some credits? Some people to thank. Yeah. Yeah, we got everyone in chat, like R. Theron, who's one one of our advisors. We've got Mir PPC in chat, chat DeKresny, Scoots, Scott Machode, Katana's in chat. No, R. Theron, you at least need to buy the scooter <laughs> dinner. <laughs> Follistan is in chat. Nice. Yeah, so all those beautiful people in chat are our patrons as well, as well as all the people that are on our credits that I can't read quick enough. Like Truggy and Veritanuda. I mean, that's why you were trying to read everybody on chat, John. Huh? Yeah, exactly. It's easier for me to do that than it is to go through hundreds of names on my return video, which I can't keep up with. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's going to wrap us up for episode 387, Yay. not sponsored by Intel, unlike last week. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> With our i386, we'll see you again. Bye, everyone. Love Bye, you. Everyone. Oh, we got to hit the stop button. Let's see if the stop button works.